So folks, welcome to worship this morning. Uh, it's a beautiful morning. I'm looking out of our front window and all I can see is blue sky. Uh, I hope it's good where you are. Um, welcome to worship. I hope you've got the necessary uh, cup of tea uh, or cup of coffee. Um, if you're in your PJs, that's absolutely fine. Um, do enjoy worship with us this morning and do sing along with the hymns. Um, we've got some great hymns this morning. Um, one done by Philip Taylor from Settle, which we're going to start with actually, uh, which is See What a Morning, uh, which is a hymn that I really love. It really speaks to me of uh, that first Easter morning and the surprise of the disciples and the impact on, on all of us of Christ's rising uh, in glory. Uh, so we're going to start with that. We've got um, Then we've got some hymns by, uh, some worship by um, Vicky which is uh, again fab some really lovely hymns to sing there um, and the shores children um, mike and zeph have done some prayers for us so i do hope you're gonna enjoy that as well um, one notice that i wanted to to give is that we are gonna try to do on zoom so i know this is another bit of technology um, some of us have been on zoom already for different socials at our two churches um, but this is live streaming now on um, Ingleton Church and Settle Church um, Facebook pages uh, and, and hi to everybody that's tuning in to those. Um, we did a, a church social for Settle this week uh, on Friday. Uh, we did one for Ingleton a week or two back, um, both on Zoom. If you would like to join us for a coffee morning, we're going to do a regular Tuesday morning coffee morning. So Settle uh, used to do a thing called Coffee Pot, uh, which was just a gathering of, of people uh, on a Tuesday morning in church, um, some lovely home baking, um, teas, coffees. Um, I'm afraid you'll have to supply your own cakes this week. I've seen some of your efforts on Facebook, and frankly, I'm thinking of breaking the quarantine and coming round because they, they look amazing. <laughs> um, but look, we're going to try and jump on Zoom on a Tuesday morning. I'm going to try to um, firm up the times that we'll be doing that. But if you'd like to join just for a chat um, with one another, um, then do come on. It'll be either 10 or 10.30. Uh, on a Tuesday morning for just for an hour or so um, and a chance to as I say bring your own brew bring a cake or a biscuit not that you need an excuse um, but we'll have uh, hopefully a good time together so look thank you uh, I'm a bit too trigger happy with my fingers on the uh, on the um, trackpad so sorry about that. Uh, we're going to start our service. Just, I'm going to show you a video. Now, this video, uh, it was put together by the Evangelical Alliance. It's um, church copyright license, so I can stream it. Um, and it's something that I just think is really lovely uh, and sums up Easter Day, uh, Easter Sunday, and the glory of Christ. So let's just watch this video together, and then we'll sing. It's finished. It's over. There's more of them than us and they look a lot bigger. The villain's got the girl and his fingers on the trigger. Voldemort, Sauron and Vader reign. It's gone to penalties against the Germans again. It's a terrible feeling when hope is erased, faith misplaced, virtue defaced, gloom embraced, reputation replaced with the taste of disgrace. When you've pushed every door and it's been slammed in your face, when you realise you're third, in a two horse race. So come sit with me on Golgotha's slopes. See human history at its lowest ebb. See the forces of goodness and grace on the ropes. Evil had spoken, last rites read. In a phony gown and thorny crown, he's mocked and knocked and shamed. As he staggers down through an angry town, they spit and hit and hate. Hands that forged galaxies and flung starry trails are pierced and punctured by merciless nails. His body succumbing to brutal infliction. These are the horrors of crucifixion. And as dice are tossed, hope is lost. Desolate disciples count the cost. King of the Jews, his headrest embossed. A criminal's killing on Calvary's cross. And as last words cut through foul-smelling air, the whole of the cosmos cries out in despair. It is finished. It's over. But there. 
then dawn breaks on Easter day, darkness quakes as shadows give way to the light. See, resurrection's the plan, it's why God sent him. And the comeback's on, there's a change of momentum. The powers of damnation in previous jubilation have been hushed and crushed by the Lord of creation. See, he takes the hit, stands where we should have stood, and that's why we call Friday good. And he's back with life and with us and blessed. And that's why we can know it as Sunday best. So to the 4 nil down, to the backs against the wall, listen to his rallying resurgent call. And to those up against it in brokenness and pain, Easter's story roars, we go again. So thine be the glory, death's lost its sting. Here's to Jesus, the comeback king. I really love that hymn. It's one of my favourite Easter songs. I know it's a modern one, but I, I really love it. Um, death is dead, love has won, Christ has conquered. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, uh, let's pray together as we come before God in our worship this morning. Let's pray. Loving and gracious God, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be the one who conquered death to call us out of our tomb, to lay aside our grave clothes and to come into your glorious light. 
that we might have life and life in all its fullness. And so we come before you this morning in our homes rather than in our community church, but still as your people, still as your body scattered through our community, that we might speak that message of life and hope to all. And so we pray as we come to you in worship, Lord, renew our hearts in the power of your spirit. Revive us, refill us with the fullness of your life. Cast aside the emptiness of the tomb and the grave clothes that once bound us, that we might live in your presence, in your light and in your fullness. And we pray in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to go on to our next hymn. Um, it's a, a song, this is um, Vicky uh, and the Shores have done this for us. This is um, the lovely, here is love, vast as the ocean. that hymn I shared at Ingleton a couple of weeks ago when we did um, the baptism service um, that that song was played when I was baptized and I really felt God speak to me through the words of that song uh, as it was played here is love vast as the ocean it said and I I felt for quite a while that I had been paddling around in in the shallows um, a kid playing on the beach almost enjoying it of course uh, lovely as it was but but here was an ocean of God's love and, and he was asking me to wade out into that ocean to know the fullness of God, the extent of God, the expanse of God's great love for me and for all of us. Here is love vast as the ocean. If you've been playing around in the shallows, if you don't know the full extent and expanse of God's love, you only have to look around 
uh, the world at the minute to know that it, it goes beyond places that we ever imagined it could. It, it cuts through into the very heart of our community and our society. For God is love, and where there is love, there is God. Here is love, vast as the ocean. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is an absolute delight. It is um, Mike and Zephy um, doing prayers for us. Let's pray together. Thank you for the bright sunny days. We pray for the people working for the NHS. Please protect them and strengthen them. We pray for the people searching for a vaccine. Give them breakthroughs and new ideas for treatments that work. Father God, help us to learn what we can from this to remember what is important, to help the earth and cherish sharing time together. We pray for people who have lost people they love. Please comfort them and help us to reach out with love. Father, help us in our own sadness, separated families and people living alone who we would normally be with at church. Peace be with us, give us peace and help us to come to you for strength and comfort and wisdom. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bye. Goodbye. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned and Folks, I'm sorry I uh, I cut off the beginning of those prayers. Um, it's just me playing with the, the sound levels, trying to get everything right. And I, uh, I I had it feeding back to me rather than through the, the output. So my deep apologies for that. And um, ironically, what, um, <laughs> what they were praying for uh, was, God, thank you for the internet and for our ability to do this, uh, just as you couldn't hear them saying thank you for the internet and our ability to do this um bit, bit of pastor error there so my apologies um and thank you to them for doing those prayers if anybody else would like to to lead prayers to to do prayers to contribute uh, anything to these services i would more than happily uh, in fact i would gratefully uh, receive it i did wonder if we might do um an all age but i would need some contributions from different people for that i'd love to do an all age online um, if you think that you might have the ability to, to film yourself over a, you know, a couple of minute or a, a three or four minute segment um, and send it through to me, then please do get in touch. I'd love these services to 
to have the variety that we have when we meet together. Um, today's reading uh, follows on really from last week's um, where we find uh, Jesus freshly emerged from the tomb, the disciples cowering uh, in their room, even having seen the risen Christ. Um, and we meet, uh, we meet them now on the evening of that first day um, in John 20, John 20, uh, verses 24 to 31. Um, and this is where Thomas now joins them. So uh, Thomas, it says, uh, John 20, verse 24. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, uh, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, we've seen the Lord. And he said to them, Look, unless, I put, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Well, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. I'm just going to pause there because I find it amazing that this is a week later they've seen the risen Christ he's appeared amongst them and and still they're hiding in fear with the doors locked Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you then he said to Thomas put your finger here see my hands reach out your hand and put it into my side stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. These signs are written that you might believe. John is writing directly to you and me, to the readers of this gospel. These things are written that you might believe. All through John's Gospel, he's been giving us uh, signs. Um, it's called a, a Gospel of Signs, um, and John labels them as signs, the first sign, the second sign. Uh, and, and in this verse, in verse 30, he says um, that Jesus did many other signs, but, but these ones are written that you might believe. John hasn't chosen all of the signs, all of the things that Jesus did. He's chosen um, particular signs to give us a flavour of what it is that he's done. I've discovered a new feature on my streaming software and we're going to give it a go. Um, given that I managed to cut off uh, the first part of the prayers, I'm not desperately hopeful. Um, but we'll we'll see if this works. Um, it's a lovely feature if it does work, but I'm, I'm going to be a bit like a weather forecaster, uh, wondering if I'm pointing in the right direction. So John's Gospel, uh, a gospel of signs. So signs can be all sorts of different things. Signs can tell us where we are so this one uh, at Settle Station tells us that we're in Settle we're at an altitude of 510 feet above sea level um, sometimes our gospels locate us they, they tell us exactly where we are in our journey of faith um, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman exactly what was going on in her life uh, when he met her by the well Jesus speaks to people in the place where they are he locates them on their faith journey and, and often he calls us out of there but uh, with Nathaniel in, in John 1 right at the beginning he uh, he sees Nathaniel under a fig tree and, and he calls him out um, and, and he tells Nathaniel yeah I saw you where you were but you know come with me come with me and you'll see amazing and remarkable things so signs can locate us and, and the gospels can certainly do that the gospel can tell us this is where you are in your faith. It can call us out to a different place as it did with uh, Nathaniel and with the other disciples. And it can point us in different directions. It can um, give us a, a, a clue as to where we should be going. Nicodemus got a, a direction sign, except a man be born again, 
he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he got to ask a bit more about those directions too. Uh, well, what on earth does that mean? He was able to say, um, go and sin no more, Jesus said to the, the woman caught in adultery in, in John 8. A, a very clear sign of the direction of her life that Jesus was pointing into. The disciples were confused. Jesus said to them just on the night before he died, um, on the night that he was betrayed, he, he, gave, he talked to them. And he said to them, where I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And John said, well, uh, and Thomas, uh, doubting Thomas, said to him at the time, well, how can we go where you're going? We, we don't know the way. And Jesus said, no, I am the way. Jesus gave him a very clear direction to follow him and him only, that there is only one way and it is the way of Christ. Sometimes the directions we get in the Gospels are, are a bit less clear. Sometimes they're slightly more confusing. Sometimes they're a little more complicated. Sometimes they might take us on circuitous routes. As the disciples mulled over where Jesus was going, they weren't really sure that they understood. Jesus talked consistently of his path to the cross, um, of all that was to come, and the disciples didn't want to hear it. Um, I, I love this. I, I saw, found this um, a direction sign of a, a roundabout and somebody had done a bit of a job on it and and it's a bit more like if you were going around with maybe the missus although she's in the next room listening so maybe I shouldn't say too much about that um, but sometimes we get on the way and take the second exit as we go past the first one. Oh, oh no sorry no I meant the first exit oh you'll have to go around again now and by the time we get to the bottom look I said I was sorry <laughs> Do you know, sometimes our faith journey feels like that, doesn't it? Oh, if only I'd done this. I, I've taken the wrong turning. Uh, oh, I'll have to go round again. I'll, uh, and we end up with, look, I said I was sorry. <laughs> there are many times in this gospel where that was the case. Um, how do we know the way that we should be going? Sometimes, though, uh, signs are... Uh, our way marker signs point to a longer journey. They point to somewhere far away and, and they're less clear um, about how we get there. Sometimes there are many routes and, and so John's Gospel as well talks about a place that we're going to abide with Jesus but it, it's less clear about our journey to get there. That place that we're going to be is for some of us hopefully a, a long way off and there are many many routes that we could take to get there. Sometimes signs are different entirely though. Sometimes signs are a warning or advisory signs. This sign here I thought was a lovely biblical sign actually. Um, narrow road ahead, narrow path ahead. We're leaving the highway on which many perish. We're leaving the wide road which is easy for us to follow. And we're following a narrow path a path of service, a path of discipleship, a path that not many people choose to follow, but a path that Christ calls us to. Perhaps those signs are more warning signs. Perhaps we read in the Bible of slippery times ahead. We maybe hear warnings of backsliding, of going backwards in our faith. So the Gospels can speak into where we are in our faith. And John's Gospel certainly does that. Uh, he speaks to uh, um, many people of the things that they should be doing, uh, of branches that maybe need pruning and, if we, uh, and of our need to abide in Christ. In this world, he says, you will have trouble. And this sign certainly speaks into the trouble that we might have. This next uh, sign, <laughs> do you know, I, I saw this and I thought of the, the Israelites wandering into the wilderness after they've left Egypt and I, I wondered if this sign had been on the opposite side of the Red Sea as they crossed over. So they come through the parting of the waves but they're not quite ready to enter into the promised land and there's a sign here that says prepare to go around in circles for a bit. <laughs> I wonder what road signs you might think of that would speak into our um, personal pilgrim journey. 
And, and I did wonder if, if anybody wanted to come up with them, it, it, young people, old people, whatever. Um, but do please put them into the comments um, onto our live stream or, or email me or direct message me, whatever. I'll, I'll post some on our um, Facebook pages. I, I, it'd be lovely to see um, what signs might speak to you of your journey. This sign certainly spoke to me. I said about the Israelites, but boy, did it speak to me as well of, of my journey. You know, where I felt that I was in a holding place for a long time, paddling on the shoreline uh, of the love versus an ocean. Here's one that might speak to us too. And, and I saw this and thought immediately of that famous song. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back. And this Sunday after Easter, that's a fantastic message, isn't it? To keep going ahead in our faith, to keep our eyes on the cross and on Jesus and Jesus only. One last warning sign. This made me think immediately of Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes in the busyness and the rush of life, we need to be reminded uh, and God puts these road signs in front of us in our daily lives. Sometimes it, those road signs are brought by other people. Sometimes they're brought through his word. But always they need to call us to prayer and to faithfulness. Sometimes our signs are more instruction signs. Um, please keep off the grass. Um, please do this please uh, John said to uh, Jesus said to the rich young man go go sell all that you have give it to the poor and, and then come and follow me there are certain things that would enable us to stay on the path and not to wander to one side or another this is my favorite slide of that genre um, <laughs> Uh, it starts off with a, a lovely uh, instruction, uh, just, just a warning at the top. That do not get uh, into the river. Uh, the use of the river for bathing, for washing, for fishing is prohibited. Uh, keep this area free of littering. And in the background you can see uh, a couple of people down by the river, uh, clearly tempted to get in. And on a warm day, of course, we all might face that temptation. And the Bible quite often gives us these uh, warnings. Don't do this, don't do that. Um, in the case of this particular sign, I, I've cut off something at the bottom, which I'm going to put back on, because this, this sign begins with this warning, do not get into the, the river, uh, no bathing, no washing. Um, but there's a reason for it. Uh, the reason is beware of crocodiles. <laughs> I love the gentleness of this warning at the beginning <laughs> and then how it turns into oh by the way there are crocodiles in this river so you might not want to do that anyway sometimes we rail against what the bible tells us to do we, we think that it's a set of rules um, to be followed for no good reason um, there are good reasons for for the things that are in the bible this is god's way of living and this is God's kingdom. And though things might not impact us directly, yet the things we do have an impact on others. So look, there are warning signs. There are instruction signs. There are signs that point the way. There are signs that tell us where we are. And John's gospel has all of those things. But, but this isn't, I think, what John is talking about when he's talking about the signs. I think it's much more like this. This, this is a brown sign. This is a tourist information sign. It, it says for, for pilgrims, for those who are passing by, there is something of interest here, something worth stopping for, something worth looking at, something worth going to investigate. In the case of uh, Jesus, there is something worth seeing, something worth our time, worth the uh, diversion. And in John's Gospel, John is absolutely clear what that thing is. It is Jesus. The thing worth pausing our pilgrim journey for. The thing that we should read into the pages of his Gospel. The things that these signs point to is who Jesus is. 
John isn't interested in miracles for the sake of miracles. He's interested in miracles because they tell us something about the person behind them. He's not interested in uh, the wine at Cana in Galilee. He's interested that those vats were empty and that now they're full. He's not interested that Jesus created bread uh, enough for the crowds of 5,000 on the hillsides of Galilee. He's interested in the fact that these people had nothing and now they have abundance. And likewise with those who were fishing on the days after resurrection. They had their nets empty. They'd caught nothing until the presence of Jesus came beside them. And as Jesus came to them and told them to cast their nets to the other side, so their nets were full to bursting, so they could barely haul in the catch, the presence of Jesus made all the difference. John isn't interested in the fish. He's interested that there's abundance in Jesus' presence. And so these things are given, he says, that you might have life and life in all its fullness. In John 10, verse 10, he says this, he says, the thief, he's talking about a shepherd, and he says, the, the thief only comes to steal and to kill, but I am come that you might have life and life in all its fullness. John's signs are to point us not to any specific um, miracle as, as a thing in itself, but to who it is that's behind them. John's gospel is information for life. <laughs> and so we've been on our Easter journey. We get to the end of this gospel story and we are invited. We're invited to see in the gospel that we've been reading who it is that's behind it. As we've gone through the Gospels, so all of John's disciples have been blind. They've been blind to the fact of who Jesus is. Those that we expect to be in the light have been in the dark. Nicodemus, one of the teachers of the law, has been to Jesus under the cover of darkness. A Samaritan woman who would have been an outsider has come to Jesus in the light and seen the light and found the light. The man who was, spiritually, uh, the man who was blind has had his eyes opened and immediately Jesus talks to the Pharisees and to his disciples about spiritual blindness. The man who is blind can see, and the man and those who should be able to see are blind. And finally, finally, here, right at the end of John's Gospel, he says, These signs are written, and he addresses you and me directly. These signs are written so that you might believe, so that you might have life. So who is it? you think Jesus is? Who is it that you say he is? And it's time to make our decision. Jesus Christ raised from the dead or just another man? In our reading, and it's so significant where this comes in the reading, in our reading Thomas has just seen the hands and the side of the risen Christ and he the first person in the Gospels to proclaim it, he proclaims this in verse, John 20, verse 28. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Thomas proclaims Jesus, my Lord and my God. Thomas has realised. Thomas, the first of all the disciples, the first proclamation in this Gospel, my Lord and and my God, not simply my master, not simply the rabbi that I follow, not simply one who called me that I spent a few days and a few years with, not simply one who did these miracles, but now, now Thomas sees, now Thomas sees this isn't just his Lord, this is his God. Blessed are you because you have seen, Jesus said. Blessed are those who believe, who trust, who have not seen these wounds in my side but have seen and realised through the signs in the Gospel pages. So what of you? Do you believe? Have you seen who Jesus is? Because Jesus calls us to life, life in all of its fullness. Not the empty vats, but the fullness of the abundance of fine wine. Not the empty nets, but the fullness and abundance 
that could hardly be hauled into the boat. Jesus calls us to life and to life in all its abundance and its fullness. If you want that life, if you desire that life, then Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I encourage you today to pray, to talk to Jesus, to invite his fullness into your life to put all that is past behind and to begin again in the fullness of Christ, our resurrected Saviour. For we say with him, my Lord and my God. Amen. We're going to pray. Let's pray. Jesus, you came into this world with one purpose, that we might have life that we might put all that's been behind us and begin again with you. We thank you that you offered forgiveness to all who sought. You offered new life to all who would abide in you. And so we confess all that has been and we pray for all that will be. Jesus, remake our hearts. May we be new in your name. May we know your abundance at this time of sparsity. May we know your life in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing. Um, I wanted to finish with this hymn. I just think it's beautiful. Um, this is a lovely version that Vic has done for us. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Let's worship together. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and
a stunningly beautiful song and I, really so appropriate for our current times. Um, thank you to everyone that's contributed to this service. If you would like to be part of one of our future ones, I would love that. Um, really, please just get in touch, uh, send something through. It would be my real honest delight. Um, if you'd like to join us on Tuesday mornings, uh, look out on the Facebook pages. I will be posting uh, about a coffee pot um, and it'd be lovely just to catch up in fellowship over a brew. Um, it'd be really nice to do that. Um, there'll be a service again next Sunday. Um, so please, again, keep watching these spaces. And through the week, I'm going to post reflections. I'm not going to do reflections every day. I tried to do that through Holy Week and in the lead up to Easter. Um, but I think it's good to, to keep on doing them and all they are is just what strikes me as I'm walking out and um, walking out this week and seeing some of the amazing things that people had done. Uh, the stones just reminded me of Palm Sunday and the very rocks crying out. Um, so please, you know, do subscribe to those if you'd like to see them. They're on our Facebook page and also on the, the YouTube ch channel um, and they're all there for, for catch up afterwards on YouTube. Um, just search for Ingleton Methodist Church on YouTube. Um, if you want to subscribe to that, that'd be great because it will get us a bit more of a profile on YouTube and we can start to, you know, have our own branding and stuff like that. But I mean, that's not essential. I'm not here trying to be a tele-evangelist. I'm here trying to, you know, help that uh, help us have some community in, in these times when we're scattered. Uh, and so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord keep us in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for tuning in and I will hopefully see you next Sunday. Tea and coffee are now being served in your kitchen. <laughs>